Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Truth Report for this week. Recently, I received a letter from a man that I've known for several years. We've never met personally, but we've corresponded. And he was responding to one of my spot reports where I identified Yahweh in the Old Testament where he says, I'm, I'm your only Savior. And then I looked at the passages in the New Testament where it says Jesus is a Savior. And I connected the two as I think the scriptures do, that Jesus is the Savior and that he is the manifestation of Yahweh in this life. Well, this man sent me a letter and he said, uh, we've got to stop perpetuating the lie. And what is the lie? He says the lie that we've been perpetuated for some 2,000 years is that Jesus is God. So he's denying the deity, the, the, that Jesus is a manifestation of God. The scriptures are clear about it. As I thought about this, I was reminded of the passage from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where it says, where the apostle says, don't let anyone deceive you. He says, the day of the Lord will not come until, uh, until the apostasy takes place and that the man of sin is revealed. So there has to take place an apostasy. And what is it? What, what is apostasy? Apostasy is basically, the dictionary definition is, abandonment or renunciation of a religious be belief. Abandonment, renunciation, the departure from a religious belief. It's defiance or rebellion or a breach of faith. And that's exactly what this man is, is contending. It's a, it's a rebellion against established faith. Uh, as I've often said, unbelievers... Uh, atheists don't apostatize, only those who claim to be believers. And uh, this is a, an evidence of apostasy in our day. And I thought uh, there's nothing clearer in the New Testament than the fact that Jesus was the manifestation of God in human flesh. Classic example of that is uh, the prologue to the Gospel of John. <clears throat> John chapter 1. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, as far back in his eternity of the past as we can go, and whenever that was, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, with God, distinct from God, but with God. And the Word was God. The Word was God in the beginning. Uh, he was with God in the beginning. And then it says in verse 14 of uh, John chapter 1, the Word became flesh and, and made his dwelling among us. The Word became flesh. The Word from eternity. Jesus existed. The Son of God existed in eternity of the, pa of, of the past. But there was a point in time where he took upon the flesh of man through the virgin birth of, mother, uh, of Mary. And he became flesh. The Word of God. God became flesh. And what is God's name? Our God has a name. It's not Allah. No, it's not, uh, it's not Buddha, it's not Muhammad, it's Yahweh. And he, he says that is his memorial name forever, Exodus 3.15. We're told to pray, put, to place his name on people uh, for God's blessing, Numbers chapter 6. <clears throat> so this is, this is evidence, clear evidence, and it's repeated throughout the New Testament, that Jesus is God and he bears the name of the Father just as I bear the name of my Father you bear the name of your Father Jesus bears the name of Yahweh uh, it's very clear Philippians chapter 2 verses 11 God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every uh, tongue will confess and every knee will bow and, and confess that Jesus is Yahweh to the glory of God. Every tongue will, even those who apostatize. It's just a matter of time. They will confess that Jesus is Yahweh, the Son of the living God. And that is the truth.